Hey y'all! The Jackets are playing right now as I write this script, so we're not going to talk about the Bruins game, but I still have about two weeks to recap in as short a time as possible, so let's go! First game since we last spoke was the Knights, um, the sixth with the Jackets won 4-1. to one. This game originally seemed terrifying because it's the Knights and Corby was in net, but four different Jackets scored. Panarin had a goal and two primary assists, and Zach Walensky broke the franchise defenseman scoring record with 13 goals. Next game, it was a 5-4 win against Colorado in overtime on the 8th. We picked up in the 2nd and then dropped off in the 3rd, as the Jackets are ought to do. Vanek scored twice, Jones picked up a goal and two assists, and Rowenski picked up another goal and an assist. I was mildly upset this one went into OT and was just so close because it's Colorado. But they've been really good recently, and they're in the top wildcard spot in the West. With about the same number of points as the Jackets, I think, like, maybe three less. And then Corby was in net again. So, sounds about right. On the ninth, we had a 3-2 win against Detroit. Bob was back from the flu, so that was great. Jones scored twice, and in general, just a really great game. On the 11th, Marcus Nunavara came off IR, which was fantastic because he's been injured for a bit. But Ryan Murray was banged up, and Lucas said Black was sick coming into the March 12th game, aka last Monday. The Jacks have pulled off a 5-2 win against Montreal despite that. Five different Jackets scored, but Wenberg picked up a goal and three assists, and uh, Jones then picked up another goal to tie Zakarwinski's defenseman goal record. That's right, we have two defensemen with 14 goals in the same season when there are 12 games left. Unfortunately, though, after that, Jones was injured, left the game early with an upper body injury, and is day-to-day, -day, though he's on the road trip right now, so we'll see if he factors into the Rangers game or just, you know, how that goes. Next game we won uh, against Philly in Philly, 5-3 on the 15th. Cam Atkinson scored a hat trick, Panarin picked up two assists, and it was generally just a fantastic game. And then finally, on Saturday, the Jackets pulled off a 2-1 win against the Sens, it was a shockingly boring game, though that's kind of just the Senators' style, the patient defensive play that slows down any team like Syrup. But still, what a pain to watch. Things we note from this game, Boone Jenner, who has looked way better as he reached the end of the season, scored a goal, furthering his point streak to five uh, games at the end of the Sens game, that is. As of right now, the Bruins game is over, it's at six games because he scored a goal in that. Won't talk about it, though. Next week. <laughs> After that game, Ryan Murray was declared not banged up anymore. So, thank goodness, because he is so incredibly injury-prone, I was very worried. But, <sighs> that's all the games. Let's see what else happened this week. Um, As I reach this point in the script, the Bruins game is then over. The Jackets have won. So we are now on an eight-game win streak. That's right. We are at the end of the season, everything is going well, we're in the top wildcard spot, and we are on an eight-game win streak! Talk about peaking at the right time. The Metro is currently the Caps with 89 points, the Penguins with 87, the Flyers and the Jackets with 85 each! That is right! The Jackets have the same number of points as the third place team and are only in the wildcard spot because of the regulation plus overtime wins, where we have one less than the Flyers. Only three points down are the Devils, though. Uh, the Panthers and the Canes have both dropped the ball a bit, so they're less of a risk to our playoff chances, but could hypothetically get in. The Panthers have 81 points, and the Hurricanes have 73. I still think it's kind of unlikely, but still something to look at. But then again, let's just stop looking down. Zach Wawinski said on March 8th that as of late, we've been looking at who's behind us in the standings, but right now we should be looking at who's in front of us and trying to catch them. Which is exciting to hear, <laughs> especially for a Jackets team that since December has had to look back because we've been playing so poorly that we've had to be constantly worried about losing our playoff spots. Of course, though, then, Torts countered that with a much more calm, don't get caught up in the numbers, don't get caught looking ahead, don't worry about what happened in the back, just worry about the next day. So, basically, despite the optimism that players may show, even as we inch closer and closer to getting that playoff spot, the Jackets' brass are still on the same one-day-at-a-time rhetoric 
that they were using when we were on a losing skin in December. It's comforting, in a way. Really, the most worrying part about this whole playoff situation is the constant terror that things will shift and we'll have to play the Penguins. Now, I'm proud of being a Jackets fan. I love the Jackets. I spend tons of money on Jackets merch. I really want us to pick up every point that we can. Of course I want us to win. But I would give so many things to play against the Caps in the playoffs. I think we could win a series against the Caps. But against the Penguins? I don't even care how we do. I don't even care who would win or how many games would go to or blah, 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 blah. I just don't think that I would survive another Penguins playoff series. Super stressful. Um, one more thing that I think is kind of important, though it's not technically Jackets news because he's a prospect, but Vitaly Abramov has hit 100 points for the Victoriaville Tigers. He's good. <laughs> Way too good to be stuck in the queue, I think. And I seriously hope that he's worked on his defensive play as best that he can when he's still, you know, playing against other kids instead of playing against men like how he could be if we were allowed to put him in the AHL. Because he'd do so much better if he could just make the team. And I think he's still a year out from us, like, being able to put him in the AHL because of the CHL, NHL deal. But he's just not improving there. He just can't move up. He's too good. But before I can start putting together next year's roster, we have to finish out with this year, right? So we have nine games left. In the next week, we play the Rangers, the Panthers, and the Blues. Steve Gordon says the Jackets need five out of eight points this week to try and secure a playoff spot. We've already gotten two from the Bruins, and the rest of them look like they're pretty possible. So with that in mind, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you loved it. I'm Lydia. This is Cannon Fire. And at this point, every game's a little stressful. They all kind of feel like they're must wins. But I just want to make sure that y'all are stopping every now and then. Not only to take a deep breath, but also to take it all in. Because as the Athletics Tom Reed said on Thursday, we've waited years to have real meaningful games to watch in March. Enjoy it!